Hi, I'm Martha. Welcome to Adulting with a Disability. Today I'll be sharing a few thoughts on capacity building component of your NDIS plan. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, go click on subscribe and tap on the bell and you'll be notified of upcoming videos. If you have NDIS, you may have capacity building budget in your plan. I'm going to talk about some of the capacity building components, but I'm not going to talk about all of them, so it's not going to be an exhaustive list. The number one component that a lot of people have is improved daily living skills. And this is all about allied health. It includes physiotherapists, speech therapists, counselling, and occupational therapists. Occupational therapists are the ones that write reports, more often than not, for functional capacity assessments that NDIS asks for, and also assistive technology reports that you might need for a new wheelchair, a new hoist, a new shower chair, etc. I'm gonna unpack the assistive technology component and the home modifications component in another video. Next, I wanna talk about the improved health and wellbeing component. This includes a dietitian, an exercise physiologist and a personal trainer and it's not a personal trainer that you find at the gym it's a personal trainer that may be NDIS registered and knows how to work with disabilities and it's good to see an NDIS registered dietitian exercise physiologist or personal trainer before you step outside an NDIS registered person because then you'll know what you need to do to prepare reports or what's included in what you can claim for. The next component in capacity building would be finding and keeping a job. So you would go to a disability employment service and they would provide support in finding a job for you, training you for the job and also on the job training and ongoing support that you might need while you're in the workplace. Another component of capacity building is improved relationships. This looks at social skill development behaviour management plans and behaviour management skills. All of these capacity building supports need reports to continue into the next plan. You need to ask the therapist or trainer to write you a report three months before the end of your plan so you can take it along to your review meeting. So they can see that you've been getting this therapy and they can assess to give you more funding for for another year. The report will state what therapy you've had, how it's helped you, why you need it to continue, and how often the therapy is required. Again, if you have any questions regarding capacity building, a good thing would be to talk to your LAC, your local area coordinator, or if you have a support coordinator to talk to them. Next video I will go into capital supports and I'll also put a link up to the core supports video so you can see what we talked about in core supports if you happen to miss it. Bye for now.